Aloha, and thank you for tuning in to Pacific Revival Center, where we say PRC is the place to be. Before we jump into the message, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and connect with us on social media. I'm excited today because Bishop Kelsey has an awesome word for us. There are reflection questions throughout the message, so comment, like, and share as you watch. We are confident that you will receive a word today that will keep you empowered and strong in the Lord. We trust that you will hear a life-changing word to carry you through. All right, are you ready? Let's tune in. It says, there is, in Christ there is neither Jew nor Greek, Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. I want to focus on that. In Christ, there's no Jew nor Greek or Gentile. Amen? And I want to talk to you point two. I talked about this a few months ago on the power of love. Right. In our generation today, we, we, we just want to hate on somebody. We got to find something to hate on, don't we? If you, if you just turn on, you go on YouTube, you go on all our communication media today, and they'll find and all people want to do is hate. Find something to hate on, because hating on you makes me feel better about myself. Amen? And that's why we want to hate on people, right? But we need to be walking in love, don't we? And let me read something to you that the, um, Dr. E.V. Hill wrote years ago before he passed on. He says, the late great Dr. E.V. Hill was once asked if, if he thought Jesus was Caucasian as de depicted in the paintings, and this was his reply. I don't know anything about a white Jesus. I know about a Christ, a Savior named Jesus. I don't know what color he is. He was born in a brown Middle East. He fled to a black Africa. He was in heaven before the gospel got to white Europe, so I don't know what color he is. I do know one thing. If you bow at the altar with color on your mind, you'll get up with color on your mind. Go back again and keep going back until you no longer look at his color, but at his greatness and his power and his power to save. And that's what we're supposed to be focusing on, amen? That's what we're called to focus on. The power of Christ Jesus, amen? But we want to get caught up in the color. Everybody want to tell us that we're the original, we're, we're the real Jews. But I just read, I, I ask people that when they ask me that, I read that scripture to them over in Galatians. So what, is it, what does that mean when it says, in Christ, there is no Jew nor Gentile? But he said, I'm making a whole new man. I'm making a whole new man, one man, amen? And he's bringing it all together. We got too, in, our, in our generation, we got too much power, too much knowledge. Too much knowledge, don't we? Just turn it. You want to know something? Just Google it. <laughs> Wikipedia. Turn it on. Too much knowledge, not enough love. Too much power, but not enough love. And I think the wrong message for this period is being preached today. The wrong message for the period that we live in. Uh, how many of you came through the period of faith? in the United States. When faith, all they was preaching was faith. If the faith ministers, you call them the faith preachers, right? And then the word preachers came next, right? The word preachers. The faith ministry went from the 80s to the 90s, right? And, and then the word preaching. Oh, he's a word man. I, I used to ask people when they call me a word man, I said, well, what are you? You, you don't believe in the word of God? <laughs> right? What do you believe in? Amen? But all through the 80s and the 90s was about faith but because we needed to have faith again, amen? To do great things, you need to have faith. How, about, how many believe that? You can't be weak in faith and do great things because you'll give up. Simple as that, amen? But for the 20s, the, the, the generation we're in now, the Lord is telling me it's grace. We need grace, don't we? We need to have grace. Because the Bible says it this way. It says, where sin abounds... We look at all the sinful things that are going on in our nation now. But where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. Grace abounds. 
you know what? Where the most sinful place in the world is, there's a whole lot of grace waiting for that place. God has a whole lot of grace for you and I, doesn't it? But grace can only be administered through love. The law can be administered through hate. Grace can only be administered through love, though. Because I have to want to just, I have to just want to do it by grace, amen? But if the law, if it's the law, I have to do it because the law says so. Is that right? But grace is given freely. Freely God has given us grace. And he says, freely you have received, freely give, amen? Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28 and 31. I'll get down into my message this morning. The power of love. As some people I was talking to this week was telling me about how, how they're not getting alone in a family because of certain issues about, you know, the, uh, we're, we're, we're the real Jews and, and all that, and it's breaking up families now, you know, and I was a little concerned about it, and I said, well, no matter what you believe, where's the love? Where's your love for them? Amen? The Bible says, and God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then miracles. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28, I'm reading. Then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? The answer to that is no. Are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Do all work miracles? No. Do all have gifts of healing? No. Do all speak in tongues? No. Do all interpret? No. Now, eagerly desire the greater gifts. That's what I want to challenge us to do for 2023. Eagerly desire the greater gifts. The greater gifts. Somebody say love. Love is indispensable. That's the greater gift, isn't it? Love. Paul says, and yet I will show you the most excellent way. Paul says the greatest gift given to us, the greatest spiritual gift we have is love. Why love? Why? We talked about the power of love a few months ago and what it does for us, but why is love the greatest spiritual gift? Why? Why love? Why not faith? Why not faith to move mountains? Or one of the other gifts? One of the other gifts. Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 through 8 tells us, if I speak in the tongues of men of angels, but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom, and can fathom all the mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. I am nothing. We lift men and women up that have great faith. But how do they treat everyone around them is important. I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. I like that right there. It does not, love does not dishonor others. We read right over that one though, don't we? It does not dishonor, it doesn't bring, in other words, I ain't going to hate on you, so I look good. I'm not going to bring you down, so I look like I got all knowledge. Like I'm all that. Like they say in a bag of chips. I'm not going to climb over your back to get to where I need to go. I got great faith, 
but I had to do this to get up, get to the top. Not so. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. That's a hard one right there, isn't it? That's a hard one. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Do you have a record? <laughs> it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Now, in our society, they bringing up your, they bringing up records that you didn't even have nothing to do with. They bringing up records for a hundred years ago. I ain't had nothing to do with that. Amen. They're bringing up records. It keeps no record of wrong. That's how we can identify whether you're walking in love or you just walking in hate. Let me just say hate. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. But hate hates the truth. Amen. It doesn't even want to hear it. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. And let me say that again. Love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Look at somebody say, whatever it is, get over it. Get over it. Love never fails. I have a hard time with that portion of scripture right there. Love never fails. Because <laughs> when people do stuff to me, I felt like love, I felt like my love failed. How about you? But the Bible says love never fails. So look at somebody say, just give it time. Just give it time, amen. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there's knowledge, it will pass away. But love never fails. It's the, it's the greatest spiritual gift. We love the, I love the spiritual gift of faith. I want to be a man of faith. But what about a man of love? A man of love, huh? Why do we believe love is the greatest gift? The Bible says, if you keep reading in that chapter, it says, now these are the greatest spiritual gifts. Faith, these abide. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest is love. Do you believe love is the greatest spiritual gift? Why do you believe it? Because the word says so? Because it says so in the book of Corinthians? Or is it more than that to you? I want to talk to you today about some more than that's. It's more than that. It's more than just because the word says so. I have a few more than that. One of my more than that is, more, is love is more than that because it makes me give. Love makes me give. What, what makes you give? They keep asking, and I'm just tired of hearing it. I'm just tired of hearing it. Keep asking, keep asking, keep asking. Love makes me give. What about what makes you give? Let me ask you, what makes you give? When there's a need, what makes you give? If I say, saints, I need a new Rolls Royce. You, you know what I'm talking about, right? You know, some of us attended ministries like that. I need a new Rolls Royce. Saints, we need to bless the man of God, right? What makes you give? Love makes you give. When you bring a real need, they need some, we need to give to the missions that's going on and this time of doing Christmas, Victory Churches always raises money for our missions to go, to go to Africa, to go to India, to go to places where there's really a real need, a real need. Amen? Love makes me give. More than that, love is the greatest spiritual gift. More than that because it makes me wait. How about you? Love makes me wait. It makes me wait. It makes me have to have patience, amen? Love is patient. Not because the words say so that I wait, because the love I have makes me wait, amen? Makes me wait. More than that, because it makes me have patience. I read in the Bible years ago where the Bible says, 
but you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God. And I, I used to say that I was in a younger church, an immature church at that time. The reason I say immature because when I told that to some of the saints in the church, the Lord told me I need to have patience. They don't pray for patience. Because what does the Bible says about patience? It says tribulation comes with patience, right? But when you go get patience, God, don't pray for patience. I said, but the, Bible, but the Lord told me I need patience. So I must need to go through something in order to get patience. Because the Bible says, let patience have its perfect work. Patience is a machine that works. And it has to work in order to become patience to you. Amen? I have to have patience to do the will of God. And the only way to do that is through love, the power of love. You have to just love. You have to love what you're doing to have patience, don't you? How many of you just last week thought about quitting your job? Said, I'm fed up with this. And if you ever get tired, if you ever stop liking what you're doing, <laughs> am I right? If you ever stop loving what you're doing, you start looking for something else, won't you? <laughs> I'm through with this. I like to always remind you that with the blessings, Jesus already warned us, with the blessings in this world, you have tribulation. Tribulation comes along with the blessing. I got to love what I'm doing enough to keep doing it. No matter what I'm going through, to keep doing it. Amen? I'm so tired of doing this. Sounds like some of you, doesn't it? You ever say, I just don't even want to do this no more, but I love it. I love it. Amen? More than that, and one of the greater ones, love makes me forgive. Love makes me forgive. How long does it take you to forgive? When it comes to forgiveness, I'm sorry to say I'm weak. I wish I was stronger at hating. Because I've been, I, I, like I, I used to say, my family used to just abuse me because they would do stuff to me and they would say things like, and I used to hate this when they say this. Don't worry about it. You'll get over it. Right after they did it. And what makes me mad is, <laughs> a few minutes later, I got over it. I ain't getting over this. I'm going to hate on this for a while, what you did. My cousin would do that, called Michael. And he would sit there for five, five or ten minutes and go, you ready to go? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> I ain't doing nothing else with you no more. Five, ten minutes later, we're right back hanging together, hanging together again. I got over it. But love makes you get over it, amen? The power of love makes you get over it. And you have to get over it quickly, amen, so you don't hold it. Let me ask you a question. Does faith, does you, you having faith make you like Jesus? That's a question to think about, isn't it? Does having faith make you like him? Like Jesus? Does giving make you like him? Does hope make you like him? Those are good, three good questions, aren't they? Can you think of any others? Does faith make you like him? Does giving make you like him? And does hope make you like him? I tell people, why did Jesus have to have faith? He made everything. Faith is for me and you to believe in him. He says he can't deny himself. He can't deny himself, so he didn't have to have faith in himself. He can't deny himself. He knew he made everything. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, so he already knew. He had already prophesied back in the book of Psalms, he says, prepare me a body. Prepare for me a body. So he was coming anyway. He was coming to the earth anyway. Um, hope, what, what, was, what was God hoping for? Only thing he hopes for is that his glory will be on you. Look at somebody say, Christ in you. 
What does the rest of that say? The hope of glory. The only thing he's hoping for is for you to accept him. The hope of glory. But hope, does it make me like him? More than that, love makes me like him. Love is what makes me like him. How about you? Until now, I've identified love as a power. But let me tell you something. Love is a person. Love is a person. God is love. And this season that we're in, we need a lot of love, don't we? We need a lot of love. I live by the power of his love daily. Daily. Daily, I live by the power of God's love. I, I can see it as I look through, uh, as I watch television, watch what, what the news, watch everything going in different places in the country. I just think, Lord, you sure love me. You sure love me. Because I could be, always look at what I could have been, where I was. And then the lifestyle that people are going through today. I look at the power of God's love. Um, one of my stepsisters, she's like a stepsister to us, Pancho. Her name is really, her name is Valerie. We don't, just some of, some of our people, friend, my family, y'all don't know their real names. <laughs> but she went from being, I remember back in the 80s, she was so strung out, so strung out on crack cocaine. But to see her today as we communicate regularly on Facebook and stuff, right? Married to a minister, both of them preaching the gospel. Both of them. And the change in her. I'll talk about that a little later on. That the, what she used to look like was, Young was a beautiful girl. But then when she got on, strung out on those drugs, I mean, how it just tore up her life. But then to see her back. And to see that whole side of the family saved. You know, that side of the family, not her, but her other sisters and all the work, prostitutes and everything, all of them saved. And they, they see me and they say, you got saved? And I say, y'all got saved? <laughs> right? We looking at each other, right? You know, I thought none of us was going to be saved. Amen. But God so loved the world. I'm in the world, so he loved me too. That he gave his son that we, and he bent over backwards to keep bringing the gospel to us. To make sure we got the gospel. That we got it. Amen. First John chapter 4 verse 8 says it this way. I live daily by the power of God's love. And it says, Whosoever, whoever does not love does not know God. That's a powerful scripture in there. Whoever does not love does not know God. If you hate on somebody, you don't know God. You don't know God. Because God is love. First John chapter 4, verse 16 says, And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. I know and rely on his love. That's why I don't fear. Let me, let me say something. The reason love is the greatest power is because my faith works through love. M my faith works because I know just how much God loves me. Now, if I didn't know how much God loved me, my faith wouldn't work the way it does. Because I would not be able to believe that God was going to support me. How about that? Can you, can you understand that? See, if I can believe that you're going to support me, then I can have faith. Am, am I right? If you're very trustworthy and you say, I I'm going to show up tomorrow and wash your car, bro, then I don't, even, I don't go to bed thinking about, I hope somebody, I hope he comes and washes my car. I hope, he, I hope he comes and washes my car, right? Because I can believe. My faith works through God's love for me because I believe they see the goodness in the land of the living. Like Job said, no matter what I'm going through, I know God loves me. 
I know God loves me. Because I know he loves me, I know how he's going to treat me. I know how he's going to treat me. How about you? How about you? Then the power of love makes my faith work. The power of God's love in 2023, we're going to see the love of God spread, watch. And then we're going to see faith spread. And we're going to see hope come alive. Amen. Because of the love that God has for us. Amen. Whoever lives in, in love lives in God. That's why I said, his love is shown to me daily because I live in it. Live, whoever lives in love lives in God. And God in them. And God in them. But we're so worried about what people did to us. What they did to us a long time ago. Or did to somebody we knew. Or did to some our ancestors. Instead of being concerned about what God is doing for us. Forget about what he did to us. Let's just somebody again say, forget about it. Paul said it this way. He says, now I put those things behind me and I press. I press toward the mark. In other words, he said, God set a mark for me to reach, a level for me to reach. We're going to be talking about levels here this next year. Levels, levels, levels. You know, there's certain levels. You know, they say there's levels in hell. But I got a good message. That there's also levels in heaven. And Paul says, I'm pressing toward the mark of the high calling. The high calling is always in Christ Jesus, which is in Christ Jesus, uh, the Messiah, the love of God. Whoever lives in love lives in God. And God in him, in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence in the day of judgment. This is how love is made complete among us so that we got confidence. I have confidence. I've been seeing it on, on, the, 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 on, 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 on YouTube. I'm starting to watch YouTube more because... Hard to find something to watch on television anymore, isn't it? Right. I, I'm sorry. I know, a lot of the 70 shows I didn't like. Right? And that's the, that's the, they're showing a whole lot of 70 shows now. You're like, Maddox. I wasn't in love with a lot of the 70 shows at all. Right? But um, so I, I go to YouTube and I'm, I guess I'm becoming like my, my son and my daughter. And they watch them little clips. If, you don't, if, if it takes more than 10 minutes... When I, when I wrote, I redid my book, I was telling you that the, um, the editors, they shrank the book down. I said, why'd you shrink it down? They said, it's because if the book's over 100 pages, nobody wants to read anymore anything that's over 100 pages, right? I said, whoa. <laughs> now, 20 years ago, when I first did the book, they said, you need to get it up over 100 pages, right? <laughs> now it's changed, right? If, 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 it's, if it takes more than five minutes to watch, nobody wants to watch it anymore, right? YouTube clips, right? YouTube clips. Well, it's, uh, most of the clips I've seen on now has to deal with people saying they went to hell and came back or went to heaven and came back or, or, or all kind of things. Different, there's another race of people out there that we never knew about. I was looking at that one last week. Uh, mankind, the Bible says it's mankind. Right? Mankind. These people was born, out, I don't know where they came from. They just discovered them. Right? They came from the same two people. Amen. <laughs> The same two. It says, but as long as we're in love, we have confidence. I have confidence. I don't have to go to heaven or go to hell to believe in God. Because he's done enough for me. How about you? Right here on earth. I've seen how he's changed my life, changed people around me, changed situations that I can't handle and speak to me and say he's going to change it and then do it. That I don't, and, and, and that's not an experience I want. I don't want to have to die and go to hell to find out that there's a hell and then come back. I'm going to believe. I believe what he said about it. Amen. How about you? We will have confidence in the day of judgment. I'm confident. 
I used to pray in my old lifestyle. I'd wake up on a Sunday morning and say, Lord, just let me make it in. Because I'd be thinking about what I did Saturday night. If I could just make it in. All I wanted was fire insurance. And God says, I want you to do more than just make it in. More than just make it in. You know, you, you ought to have the mindset that just making it in is not going to be good enough. Because if we invited you to one of your favorite teams or, 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 or musical artists and we offered you the best seats and said, this is what you need to do to get the best seat, how many of you would just want to be sitting up there in the back? See, some of you don't mind going to the game and sitting way up there, you know, what they call it, in the nosebleed section. I rather just stay home watching on TV to be in the nosebleed section. I'm sorry. It's just, me, I just can't see that fast. <laughs> I see nothing. Especially the basketball game, sitting way up there. I can't even see the basketball. I don't know what's going on. Somebody had to tell me, be sitting there watching it on TV while you're at the game. That's why they had a big screen up there, isn't it? If I got to go up there and watch it on the big screen, I might as well just be at home. That's, that's my opinion. You know, some of you just want to be, you just want to say, I was there. Amen. <laughs> how, many, how many have that attitude? You just want to say, I was there. I have the attitude, if I'm going to be there, I want to be part of it. Amen. <laughs> that's my attitude. I want to be part of it. Some of us just want to make it in. But if you read what the Bible, we'll get into that next year, what the Bible says about just making it in. You say, I want to do more than just make it in. Amen. <laughs> Some of us going to make it in, then he'll say, get out. I'm just being real. <laughs> say what? <laughs> in this world, I like this. In this world, we are like Jesus. In this world, we are like Jesus. That's why I said, the greatest part thing about love is it makes me like him. Not like him, say, oh, hey, I like him. No, it makes me act like him, look like him, talk like him, respond like him. In this world, we're like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. It drives it away. Because fear has to do with punishment. Your Bible may say fear has torment. I tell people that. You don't want to be motivated by fear. Be motivated by love. Paul said the love of God compels me. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. How many of you are like me and have to drive out fear daily and weekly? have to drive out fear. Even when someone blesses you, you have to drive out fear. That's how powerful fear is in the world. This is too good. What's the, how can you finish that? To be true. <laughs> to be true. <laughs> and you have to drive it out. Because if you don't drive it out, you give it away. You give the blessing away. Because you're afraid of it. You're afraid of it. This is too good to be true. Why would they bless me like that? Why would they give that to me? Ah, oh, something must be wrong. Something must be wrong with that. You got to drive it out. And when perfect love drives out fear, then faith shows up. I tell people that fear is the evil twin of faith. They're twins. And it's hard to tell them apart because they're identical. I tell people, I give people the definition of fear and the definition of faith. I says, fear is believing that something that you can't see or you don't know is going to happen. And faith is believing that something that you cannot see and don't know is going to happen. The only difference is fear has torment. Fear will torment you. Don't, it's, 
But that's not going to happen. That's not going to work out. It's that they're not going to work in your favor. Fear, that's torment. It'll make you believe that something that you cannot see and do not know is going to happen. But faith says, just trust God. Just believe. Keep believing. You hear that still small voice behind you saying, like Jesus told J.R.S., just believe. Fear showed up. Don't trouble the master any longer. Your daughter's dead. Don't even bother him. Your daughter's dead. And I know J.R.S. is thinking, if you had not stopped to mess with this woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years, now you could have came back and dealt with her. We was on my way. We was on my. We, we was on our way to my house to deal with my sick daughter, and this woman's had her issue for twelve years. She ain't going nowhere. That's fear. And it, and fear shows up and says, "Don't trouble him any longer. Your daughter's dead." And Jesus says, "Faith says, love says, just believe." Just he didn't holler. You need to believe in me. He just says, "Just believe." Is that the way you hear the voice? Just believe. Fear is screaming at you. Not going to work. Faith is quietly saying, just believe. Just believe. Faith is peaceful, isn't it? <laughs> God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God. I like that. Are you living in him today? Are you living in God today? And God is living in you? He's standing at the door knocking, even right now. He's standing at the door knocking. And he says, whoever answers, he'll come in. As soon as we had to start playing, stand to your feet, we're very close. It's the end of the year. How many of you are planning for 2023? You got businesses, right? And as soon as you start having to, you got to, you got to lay the budget out for the whole year. Amen. As soon as you start laying the budget out, <laughs> what happens? We all live in the United States. We all, live, we all live on the planet Earth. That's the problem, isn't it? <laughs> we all live here on the planet Earth. And we all have to go through the same things. The Bible says it this way. That's what Paul says. For no temptation has taken you except that is common to mankind. Amen. I'm not worried about the next antelope I'm going to get to eat because I'm not a lion or a tiger and I ain't got to go out there and hunt and kill an antelope to eat. <laughs> Amen. Or kill a, uh, or fight with the hyenas. Right? Stop them from taking my, my food away from me. I ain't got, I ain't, whatever I'm going through is going to be common to you and you and you and, and all of us. Amen. And I got to have faithful, and we always talk about faith, but more importantly, I got to have love. I got to just keep on loving what I'm doing and not let fear overtake me so that I stop loving what I'm doing. Because God is going to show up. He's standing at the door and he's knocking. He says, whoever, what's, it, what's the scripture says? Whoever does what? Whoever's answers. Whoever opens the door, he says, then I'll come in and sup with them, sit down with you. He says, not only me, but I'm, I'm bringing my father with me. I'm bringing the family. He's bringing the whole family, matter of fact, right? So you got to prepare. Look at somebody say, you got to prepare enough for the whole family. <laughs> he, he's bringing the father with him. He's bringing a few angels, right? principalities, amen, other human beings, <laughs> people, he's bringing them with him. They show up in your life, am I right? Somebody can testify about that. They show up in your, why are you, in my, why are you even here? <laughs> because God sent them to you. Because you opened the door for it. Look at somebody say, you opened the door. You didn't have to answer. <laughs> but we're glad you did. Amen. See, that's where love does. Love opens the door, doesn't it? How many of you know you got your the door? Our doors so way out there. If somebody knock, that's where our doors are. Now, now we got cameras on our doors. 
I don't even look at the camera. <laughs> we got cameras on the doors and we got gated communities that you can't even knock. <laughs> I ain't got to be bothered with you if I don't want to. But if God is knocking on the door, you need to open it up and let him in. Because when you let him in, then he says, and me and my father will come in and sup with you. And when he comes in, guess what? He always leaves a blessing. He just showed up. He was, he was walking on his way to Sodom and Gomorrah. We'll close with this one. On his way to Sodom and Gomorrah to deal with Sodom and Gomorrah. He's going to deal with Sodom and Gomorrah again today. Amen. So look at somebody and say, don't you worry about Sodom and Gomorrah. Because God will take care of Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> We don't need really to raise up an army to do it either. He just sent a couple of angels down there. Yeah, y'all go take care of Sodom and Gomorrah, right? And on the way, he says, let's stop by and visit Abraham on the way. And in visiting Abraham, Abraham saw him coming, and he stopped him. Hey, come and eat. What gets me, think about this, because this is where I think. Abraham knew who he was. Wow, think about that. Abraham knew who he was. He knew it was the Lord. And he sat down and he, he ate with him. He said, let me, let me fix you something to eat. And he said, okay. And then while they're sitting there eating, he says, where's Sarah? Where's Sarah? And he said, oh, she's in the tent cooking the food. He said, tell her that this time, next year, according to the time of life, nine months from now, that's the time of life, isn't it? She's going to have a child. And she, she started laughing, What? You waited. Well, you, you, you told us that was going to happen 25 years ago. Now you wait until I'm, I'm 99 and my husband's 100. I don't even know if I want a child now. <laughs> That's the way we would be thinking, wouldn't it? Wait, what? Now? <laughs> I used to have that fear. That's true because we got married. I, got, I was a little older, right? I was 40. No, when you got pregnant. And, and what, I, what I used to be thinking about was, here's my thought, here's the fear that came. Everybody else said, oh, that's a great thing, right? I was thinking, I'm going to be 60 and they're going to still be at home. <laughs> that's the thought I had. I'm going to be 60. All my, everybody I grew up with, their kids, kid, they kids got kids. <laughs> Am I right? I, I mess with them now when I go back, all my cousins and stuff. I said, Y'all must have had kids when y'all was real young. They said, no, you just waited until you got old. Because <laughs> they got great, they got great grandkids. <laughs> and I was thinking, I'm going to be 60. That used to always jump in me at certain times. I'm going to be 60. I'm going to be 60. Fear has torment. <laughs> That's a thought that torments you, isn't it? I'm going to be 60. Just think, if, if you're thinking, I'm going to be 80 and they're going to still be at home. Well, now I'm not thinking that's just such a bad deal. I'm glad Kelsey's still at home. <laughs> we, we're blessed. <laughs> we are blessed. Amen. It's a blessing having a young person in your house can pick stuff up. It's a blessing. <laughs> Ain't a curse. Kelsey, go take that trash out. <laughs> when there's only two of you, it's only one person that's going to do it, ain't it? Am I right? <laughs> and we know who that is, don't we? <laughs> it's a blessing having somebody young go to the store. <laughs> And we got over driving, ain't no thrill as it used to be anymore. Fear has torment. Love casts out fear. Get this now, faith does not cast out fear. They're twins, brother and sisters, right? Or brother and brothers, whatever. But love says, fear, you got to go. You got to move somewhere else, amen? You got to leave here. I'm just going to hang out with faith. Amen? 
I'm going to cast out the fear and go ahead and let faith have its perfect work. Amen? Somebody say, let faith have it. Let faith work. Perfect faith casts out fear. I'm sorry, perfect love. Perfect love casts out fear. And when fear is gone, then all leaves is faith, isn't it? Amen. See, at your age, we're just so happy for you. <laughs> but if you may be about 30, 40 years older, we'd be praying for you. We would be praying because your women are here that we know what she's going through, huh? <laughs> Amen. Am I right? Me and we probably, we probably wouldn't be thinking about it, but <laughs> we'd be bragging about it probably. But like we did something. <laughs> but we need more love. And in 2023, God says we're going to see a manifestation of love that's going to really open the door of grace. It's going to open great doors of grace because when love moves, then grace can abound. When love moves, then grace can abound. And when grace comes around, people that don't like you have to bless you. People that don't like you have to work for you. Work for you. I can't stand them. <laughs> but I can't leave. <laughs> Amen. I had people come up and tell me, I, I've never really liked you. And still bless me. I don't know why I'm giving this to you. I know why. I know why. Because the love of God was compelling them to do it. And it used to be I would be offended by that, but I don't care. Because I, I, I got a higher level I'm reaching toward. The higher calling, which is in Christ Jesus. And so what you feel about me, it makes me, don't, don't bother me one way or the other. I get over it. I get over it real quick, what you, how you feel about me. I'm moving on with what, how God feels about me and what he wants me to do in accomplishing the purpose that he has set for me and my family and everybody around me. Amen? That's my goal. What's your goal? Amen? To bless God? Well, let's close with this. Say this with me. I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Now look at somebody that says, the humble will hear and be glad. Tell somebody that says, oh, how's it go? No. Oh, bless the Lord with me. All ye his saints. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> I got to get y'all involved. Amen. 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 Let's give God a hand. What a good word for us to, to hear. God is love. And we all need more of him and more of his love. Mahalo for tuning in with Pacific Revival Center. If this message touched your spirit, make sure to subscribe and follow us on all our social media accounts to connect with our online family. If you're already a follower, share our content with your family and friends. And if you'd like to support the ministry, click Give Now below. Our mission is to train, equip, and send out armies of believers to minister the gospel to all nations. And together, we can send the love of Christ to all corners of the world. We'll see you next week here at PRC, the place to be.